Hello everyone, my name is Quinn Pendleton and I'm sitting here with Artistic Director of Momix, Mr. Moses Pendleton, who also happens to be my father. And so he has asked me to do the moderation for this curtain chat for the Joy season. So we're going to talk a little bit about the performance of Alice. And then so we're just going to jump right in. Uh, first of all, Moses. Yes. Uh, jumping <laughs> jumping is, a, <laughs> is, is a good uh, verb uh, for uh, a rabbit such as myself, a white rabbit, just in your honor, always behind, always late, for something you don't know, such is the human condition. We're always uh, feeling we're a bit late, and so there's a, a nervous tension to the rabbit, which I identify with. Well, since you can identify, that was actually the first question, is going to be, why go again. Why Alice? Why did you choose this piece and this premise for, for this latest creation? Well, I've had a long history with Alice and all it signifies, and uh, uh, to, you know, boil that idea down over the experiences of Disney and other uh, creations and impressions of Alice, uh, the, uh, the surreal and the... And the the amazing ability and, and passion that Lewis Carroll had for puns was something I couldn't resist. It inspired me to be punnier, and to, and and, and it, even though it's punishment for close friends of mine, <laughs> you know, I, I do it anyway in Lewis's honor. So there was actually a history, though, right? As I remember, you were telling me that Palabolus in your days in Dartmouth. You had started to work a little bit already there, and there were some other examples. Well, see, our, our work with Palabolus, which was our Victorian uh, repressed piece, Untitled, with the two tall ladies being growing tall by our physical male efforts underneath the skirts to, to make them grow Alice in Wonder-like uh, tall and con uh, consequently uh, Alice in Wonder-like small. Uh, that reduction in scale is one of the, more than Alice herself, maybe Alice is the number one idea, but the other one is uh, a, a shrinking and expanding reality. And what year uh, was that already? Well, so that was 1975. Okay. And uh, then uh, the, the, the next time was a commission that I received uh, to uh, create something new for the Nutmeg Ballet in Torrington, Connecticut. Which I think I can remember which, quite well. <laughs> uh, Quinn can remember quite well because she was a member of the class of... Uh, uh, 86 or something. Not or quite, but yeah. Somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, uh, you know, we decided to, uh, to perhaps we could do something for the kids uh, uh, on the theme of Alice in Wonderland, and we called it the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Uh, the the marvelous part about it, not, not only having Quinn uh, being in it, but is that we created a, a multiplicity of Alice's, 30 of them, in fact, and in the end of the production, uh, there was a uh, a wonderful uh, mo mo movement and sound environment where out of the, the dark would come and in, end up in silhouette. You know, 30 young children all saying and claiming that they are Alice. And there was this cacophony of little girls' voices uh, saying, I'm Alice. No, I'm Alice. Quinn knows this. <laughs> it was most chilling image. And at, underneath that, we brought uh, Gray Slick and White Rabbit. And if, as, as they were saying, I'm Alice, I'm Alice, it fades away to the classic white rabbit. And what you see is like Farmer Osgood's farm, the, the, the hippie girls just jumping up and down to a uh, surrealistic pillow. It just threw me back to the days when I was, uh, you know, cavorting on the hate uh, in, in, in my time and during the flower generation. So then actually, a few but it's part later, of the psychedelic generation was beginning to develop the mind mm. for psychedelia, for dream logic, for surreal, Dali, uh, something uh, uh, it was okay to look at, uh, but you don't know what it is. You know, this kind of unsuspecting universe that is opening up. And, you know, it was the hippie culture, the drugs, the psychedelia. And Lewis Carroll, of course, wrote the first uh, uh, book on drugs. He wrote about hallucinogens and, and changing uh, scale. It's, so these, he was really writing this and getting away with it then was quite remarkable. And even the hookah that's, that's it's in Disney for children, he's just getting stoned on camera. And, and kids are buying it. Well, we're going to go too much into that part, maybe. No, so, no, uh, we cut that out. But I'm saying they, these are uh, how something uh, is interpreted, and then that interpretation is reacted to into another form, be it another painting, a movie. It's interesting to see 
Alice is like this ball of energy that's been bouncing around in many different media, uh, sound, visual, play. Until it's now finally come into the momics medium, which is yes, it's, my next so question. Yes, so this is, I, I think what it does do is it's momics in Wonderland here. Momics is, uh, and in order to do that, you had to disguise yourself as some uh, image of Alice and multiply her. We well, have... they're actually kind of perfect, right? Because they, they encompass the same, let's say, as you said, the common denominator of surrealism and wit and humor and kind of otherworldliness. Yes, worldliness. You, you have an otherworldly character who's kind of in a position in the theater as an observer of even otherworldly characters that she's encountering in her trip through the Momix show. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, and ev eventually she grows... 10 feet tall, and you just got to ask her, you know, how was it? <laughs> well, and actually, in every, in every Momix show, we would say that we kind of go on to some kind of... There is a connection. There is a connection. So, uh, in fact, this, this storyline and the Momix ways is very well aligned. It is say. still a Momix show. It is still yeah. a Momix show. Yes. Yeah. And, it, and, and that's all we know. It's like when you look at a Henry Moore pr premiere, you'd say that, that, that's definitely a Henry Moore. Right, yeah. Well, Almost fact, identical. You said as well that Lewis Carroll originally intended the work as a theater piece, more so than, than just a book in London. His aim, his delight, his, his dream was to visualize uh, his story uh, that Tenniel uh, illustrated into some kind of musical uh, comedy uh, on the West End in London. And he, in fact, accomplished that uh, several hundred times. And... But that was his goal, really, was he was a screenplay writer or, you know, or a dramaturgist in a way. He wanted to see it visualized and in three dimension. He loved costumes and lighting and all this. It's fascinating to see that connection as well, that it was, uh, uh, and, and again, the alchemy of it is that you momix with all whatever it's in its collective brain and, and that I might poke, uh, they might uh, just, when you go in and say, Alice, we just bring out little white dresses. That's what we think. And you start with the image and then see what it does through time and space and to certain kinds of musical backgrounds. Well, that's kind of what you've done, I guess, then. Yes. When you think about the story of Alice, would you say that the, the Momix version, does it follow the story or, or does it not quite no, go in you, its own direction? I want to say, and I think I said in a previous take, that it is a work in progress. And what I see that we need to progress with is the uh, the stitching together of the desperate images into a tale that is its own tale. It might not be Alice in Wonderland d directly, but it is a, its own fairy tale. It has dynamic and some resolution with these multiple Alices becoming one giant Alice. So audiences, you know, this kind uh, of thing. audiences can expect them that they will with definitely... text will help describe it. If they don't see it, tell them this is what they should be seeing. And that might just stimulate the brain to see. And therefore, they would be relaxed to follow the next step. They won't be confused. Well, they will see, though. They, they will see that we know the characters that they're going to recognize a little bit. But let's say it's not going to be the... Weren't you going to ask me percent. about, uh, uh, has it changed much since its inception? That was the next one, but yeah. Okay, <laughs> but, but, well, I, I, so go ahead and ask me so that I can think about it for well, a few more seconds. Well, basically, it was more going on the, um, the concept of not following the story, but we kind of covered that. And, and you were going to give the example of how the different interpretations, such as Dali or Disney... And how we change. And how each interpretation kind of uh, goes in its own liberties, so they don't all follow the story per se as it was written in the book. Not at all. And uh, in fact, what was written in the book were illustrations that Dolly was influenced by to create further illustrations. So the book is illustrated. That's why there is a book. Right. And, and that illustration is uh, up to the illustrator. You know, that's what the book does. Mm -hmm. It gives people free uh, uh, reign, so to speak, to uh, 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 apply your own inner th rabbit hole <laughs> to, to the evening. And, and, and so I wonder, is this Alice in Wonderland or Alice in Hell? You know, the, the original title that Lewis wrote was Alice Underground, which in, in the, his... his uh, uh, people were thinking that perhaps his people uh, were thinking of perhaps it was slightly negative, you know. It's a, and I wanted to open the, the initially the show with a with a funeral. That's a nice way to open, you know, the death of Alice, but the her resurrection, whatever. 
And so there's a, uh, there's a lot of uh, ways that you can get in, in, in this. Go ahead. Well, no, yeah, uh, going yes, back to I the titles, you. in fact, because the story does not follow exactly the book, as I recall, uh, it was not the original title was to be called Alice. It was going to be called Muscaria. Yes, I, I, I was influenced by Alice enough to know that the magic mushroom was also a character, a main character, a, in terms of the, the symbol of it, of the other mind, the psychedelic mind, mm -hmm. the mushroom mind, the mushroom head. So that was Alice title, takes, yeah. takes a bite of a magic mushroom, and its official name is uh, uh, Amanita Muscaria. And I thought that one of the, er, one, one, the, exactly the earliest title for this wasn't Alice, or Alice in Wonderland, it was Muscaria. It's connected to Alice in Wonderland via the shroom, uh, but that was enough so that we didn't get in a box about, uh, uh, especially to the Alice aficionados, that we weren't uh, performing the episodes that they had come to love and study and all this. And then so the so we, uh, that opened up, it opened up the game a little bit. But somehow we had other conversations and uh, with our presenter in, in Philadelphia where they wanted to, this is Randy Schwartz, wanting to say uh, over dinner, Alice, Alice, Alice. And we kept, kept thinking, instead of growing very tall, she multiplies. When she expands, she becomes more, so we wanted that multiplicity of allies. We call them the allies. <laughs> <laughs> we needed allies in this production. Alice, Alice, Alice. Yeah. We shrunk that down to Alice. And you, I think in, in your, the end of your question was, how much has it has it changed since uh, since 2019? Uh, and uh, and I wanted to answer by saying that uh, we were in the middle of launching this new production. COVID hits, everything stops, and so everything has been kind of hanging in the air or frozen, and has resurfaced just recently. Uh, and I was saying, I think, in an earlier take that that. Uh, you know, having that hiatus from the work in the end might help see it from a, a different uh, angle, which might give it some dimension. So would you and say so I, I think this hiatus to, to, to just forget about it and then see it anew. And we've made a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. Like one large change was moving the uh, two acts to a one act. So, so you don't the break that. Time, you, right? you, right. you ask people to come down the rabbit hole and don't in the middle of their trip their flight down or upward. Uh, you don't just turn the house lights on and tell them to wait in their seat <laughs> and to, for half an hour with your mask on. That's out. That's not, that's not part of the show anymore. So this will be the first time that anyone so, actually yes. sees the We've first never time. done. I've never seen it either. <laughs> you know. So uh, what gives us? No, we're very happy to be back in New York and at the Joyce, of course, a long history. But it is it is also funny to think that. Uh, you know, I, I joke with the dancers, I said, you know, like we get the, all this new stuff worked out at the Joyce, you know, as a kind of out of town tryout before we go to the Warner. <laughs> so, so we really appreciate the Joyce helping us figure what this piece should uh, do uh, in its next evolution. Well, it's constantly ev evolving, correct? We in hope. Sense, we, so. we hope it evolves uh, or at least say it, uh, it boils itself down to a nice chunk of sugar. <laughs> 40 gallons of sap make one gallon of syrup. So one gallon of syrup, you just keep, you don't, it, that's nice to have, but what you want is pure crystal. And, and that's gonna cost you a lot of boiling. So uh, kind of <laughs> jumping ahead now, um, I'm sure a lot of like, people are- <laughs> yeah, The rabbit, yeah, let, let the rabbit <laughs> run, run on. Let's run along. Yes, um, pause, I'm sure let, a, lot a pause people, that refreshes. A lot of people are wondering in the sense, so when you go to create a show such as Alice or, or any more show, um, what would you say is kind of your general creative process when you when you approach a new work or a new project like this? I think the most incredibly important thing, <laughs> if you don't mind my <laughs> coughing, <laughs> is uh, one word, energy. And I think without energy, nothing gets done. And it ain't no fun <laughs> when you're tired and are, and are expected to do something you physically and mentally don't think you can handle. So what you need to do is alchemically spin the retort. And I'm pretty good at being a catalyst for choreography. Hmm. Come in like the Energizer Bunny and saying, wahoo wah, we are going to take it up 10 more percentage points. So you don't And actually... you are too. And I think it's important to uh, convey the, uh, the, the imagery and the enthusiasm for it 
so that they will do things they might not normally do, do on their own. So you do give them to be a lot directed. Of, you give them a lot of freedom in the sense you don't actually think of steps and come in and teach them. It's more of a workshop and a like well. A speaking of taps, uh, ta uh, steps, taps. We're uh, or back in, but anyway. Uh, but we're speaking of that. You no, know, we. I really see myself as as more in the world of painting or sculptures, where we we would go in and work on a with props or costumes or lights or a combination of the, the four to make vi a, a visual image uh, out of paper and projections or long sticks or whatever as to extend the range of the human body into non-human uh, fantasies, uh, yet you still feel the human connection. That's kind of part of an overall aesthetic of metamorphosis and connecting to worlds beyond just the, the human world through, through movement. And, and But through movement of imagery that is moving musically, that can almost uh, get you to sense, you know, it's the transformation of, of the overall show into, uh, into something, some stream of a, of a dance, visual dance theater dream. Well, so you kind of started with the basic premise of, you know, you know you're going to go on the theme of Alice and you know you had these kind of characters that were, as we spoke earlier, I think some related, sections, but, yeah. some sections allude right to it. Alice in the beginning is just suspended in a white dress in the air, like a Buddha, and she's reading the book Alice. Don't and give then, it away; everyone has to see it. Well, it's kind of cool <laughs> that when she turns the book upside down to Alice to be read, ah, then she begins to understand it. You know, and this and the ladder begins to move. It's really uh, quite unique. So I, I'm what, what I'm I'm saying this. Because being away from it, I can sit back and say, that's what this piece, this little beginning, which is only maybe three minutes, Momix kind of creates little beginning, middles, and ends like a singles on a rock album. You know, that it's three or four minutes of uh, that it has its own life. Uh, and then in, and something just as in Alice Wonderland, there's no logic to the change. A door slams and you're somewhere else. But there is a logic, actually, because you do spend a lot of time and effort on the flow of the show, let's say. So the musical dynamics, having something really intense followed by something calm. So while it does seem a lot Yeah, no, I, I was saying I took 21 pieces of music and stitched them together. But in doing so, you needed to adhere to the overall dynamic of the show acoustically. Uh, so that, uh, like, and that's why I think... The taking out the intermission, uh, which uh, began with that pounding of the drums on the feet and the mirrors, mm -hmm. very dynamic. And the next thing uh, you see now is that delicate little calm, fifth, yeah. calm ocean. You know, there is another shore. After this image, the next the title is There is Another Shore. And that shore is like sorbet, just for five minutes of a kind of an intermission without getting out of your seat and not having to wait more than the a few minutes, but you're watching some other texture. Uh, that uh, The umbrella piece actually will get better because it's now right up against Contrast something quite violent. Mm. And so overall, you're looking at visual and sound tracks that go right through pieces. That's what the, you know, the old mix master here is, is still <laughs> working on. You know, it's still typing. Right. <laughs> and it will continue to go on. Yes, so, I swear uh, by my right paw. <laughs> So uh, finally, well, just as a kind of wrap-up question, um, we've talked a lot, and it's actually been in several programs, that Alice is going down the rabbit hole, so to say, in Momix's, uh, in Momix's world. So what we did was actually looked up the dictionary oh, you did definition. You really, to yeah, actually did, see what rabbit hole really meant. To actually see what going down the rabbit hole means. Pay, pay, pay attention. Um, and then so just we'll ask and, and see if it's correct by any means. So according to the dictionary definition, down the rabbit hole is a phrase used to refer to a bizarre, confusing, or nonsensical situation or environment, typically one from which it is difficult to extricate oneself. So would you say that that's a... Kind of what people can expect when they come to see moments. I think if you read it with that tone, I'd say yes, yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely put it in the program note. We could like or we could tweak uh, tweak your voice uh, to, to say <laughs> definition of rabbit hole, because the show is after it's Alice. The next the, the next line is down, down the, rabbit the rabbit hole. So you need to what you <coughs> if you really knew what a rabbit hole meant. Sometimes. It, it was a, it was a more, than a, more than a bad dream. It verged on nightmare. And there, there's a lot of uh, 
sometimes I am uh, very uh, frightened to, to put certain things out there that way, uh, thinking that that's rather dark, you know, and, but so is, uh, it's only as dark as the ending is light. Yeah, but Alice is slightly dark, in fact. Uh, I know, I don't, I, I think it's an Alice for just very uh, young-minded people, you know, over 60. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say uh, it's not really a show for kids. I think kids have enjoyed it. At, at well, I think, you know, the, the, the child's mind can just see the pictures and the sound. And if they don't fall asleep, which is a fine thing to do, of <laughs> course, uh, they might find some interest. Yeah. But generally, as, say... as every show, I think Momix is a show for everyone, Uh Anybody who's plant, hungry. animal, mineral, everything, everyone All is you, welcome. Even poison ivy is welcome <laughs> in our theater. Even the mosquitoes. <laughs> yes, bring on the crows. Bring on the crows. Well, well, thank you very much, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed this talk. And uh, so, Momix will open this week at the Joyce in New York Theater uh, with Alice. And uh, hope to see you there.